welcome to the South African Civil Society Information Service. I'm Fazila Farouk in Johannesburg. The labor movement and the political landscape is undergoing a tectonic shift at the moment. Now much of this can be deduced from the current struggles within the tripartite alliance and particularly in relation to the split inside trade union federation KUSATU where some voices within the labor movement are calling for greater accountability from the ruling ANC. With 20 years of democracy not showing many gains for the working class in South Africa, some trade unions inside KUSATU are starting to question the value of this alliance partnership. And the most vocal of those trade unions calling for greater accountability from the ANC is NUMSA, the National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa. Now NUMSA is very much in the news this week. Their workers are out on strike and they have a long list of serious demands which include a wage increase of between 12 and 15 percent, a housing allowance of a thousand rand, they're calling for a ban on labor brokers and they're also calling for um, the youth wage subsidy to be stopped. Now some commentators are calling this strike of NUMSA's a political strike. They're saying that NUMSA is trying to send a strong message to government and to the private sector and that NUMSA has a point to prove. And they're making this remark particularly in relation to the fact that AMCU has successfully concluded its five month long strike and they've made significant gains for workers on the platinum sector. And commentators are saying that they've raised the bar very high for other trade unions, so NUMSA does have a point to prove. My guest today, who's going to talk to, to us about all of these issues, is Irvin Jim. He is the General Secretary of NUMSA. So welcome to Saxes, Irvin. Good afternoon. I'd like to start the conversation talking about the current strike that's taking place, and then I want to talk a little bit about NUMSA's united front, as well as also this movement for socialism that you're trying to, to launch. Um, can you comment on this critique that's out there at the moment, that this is a political strike, that you've got a point to prove, and, and it's just posturing uh, on NUMSA's behalf at the moment? <laughs> well, I think a couple of points to be made. I think the first one is that the demands that are on the table, I don't mind anybody who want to launch a particular perspective on the NUMSA strike. But I think the issues of labor brokers, the issues about the youth wage sub subsidy, to the extent that they have been driven by the state against our will. For instance, we have been calling on government for years now that it must ban labor brokers. We rejected with contempt the basically a stance taken by government where they subsidize true workers' capital uh, by introducing a tax incentive scheme where workers would basically be, money would be deducted from them by the employers and this money will not be paid over to, to, to SARS and those employers would, by virtue of doing so, they will bring in young people, they will pay them between 2,000 and 6,000 and we know that in the point of production what companies have been doing, they have been to champion Japanese management technique, um, um, which is about continuous improvement, where they restructure the workplace, where they basically take information from workers and ask them a simple question, what can we do to help you to work easy and to work smart? And they take all that information and basically watch also their movement and take that information and restructure the workplace. If you were 1,000 workers working in a company, they will restructure the workplace such that 500 workers will basically be di displaced in the point of production. But what they will not do is to compromise volumes of production. They will do this also by reinforcing it, by bringing new technology that further displaces workers. I think for the past 20 years, that's what we had to grapple with. With, with globalization being presented as a panacea, with the restructuring taking place in the point of production. And therefore, that is why we argued that to bring young people in the point of production who will produce in the production line, deliver quality production, but they will be paid between 2,000 and 6,000. This can only be the ammunition 
to the bosses to further exploit the working class. If therefore anybody want to call us challenging that, that we are busy with a political agenda, I don't think we deserve to be explaining that to anybody. Because I think exploitation of workers is what we stand against, is what we, are, we, we, we fought for all these years. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what's happening in uh, Kosatu, um, and particularly in relation to um, alliance politics. At NUMSA's special national congress in December, you called for Kosatu to break from the alliance. At the same time, NUMSA was very supportive of General Secretary Zwelenzi Mavavi of Kosatu when he was suspended from Kosatu. But between December and now, quite a few things have changed. Um, Vavi is back. He's been reinstated into his position as General Secretary. As General Secretary, he's trying to manage the discord inside Kosatu. And he's trying to maintain this kind of shaky ceasefire within the, t the alliance that you have. I mean, on the one hand, you're calling for Kasatu to break away from it, and he's one of your strongest allies. And uh, it's for those of us sitting on the outside looking in, it looks like you're calling for one thing and he's trying to achieve something else inside. Can you comment on that? Well, I'm not sure whether he will succeed to manage the contradiction uh, in the Federation. Contradictions sometimes are necessary to break new ground. There are those who want to maintain the status quo. There are those like us who fundamentally f feel very strong that we need a radical program, a program that must ensure that we nationalize commanding heights of the economy. We don't just do it. They must be in the hands of the working class who produce, but also to ensure that we champion manufacturing and industrialization and that we must smash the colonial wage. But my question really was related to the fact that, you know, your strongest ally doesn't necessarily seem to be on the same page with you. <laughs> Vavi. <laughs> well, I think it's a complex question in the sense that for any, I'm the general secretary of NUMSA, one of the things that is my primary responsibility is to do everything to make sure that workers are united because united we stand divided we fall i guess i will i will know how to lead kusatu because it's very complex it's different different autonomous affiliates the federation is but just an umbrella i guess when you occupy that position you have got a duty and a responsibility to do everything to fight and to struggle for unity because unity is what we can only make workers to defend their gains. And it can only be a vehicle to ensure that it improves its condition. But my honest view is that I think what is critical for Vavi is to continue to champion the cause of the working class and the poor, is not to try and satisfy various factions that are already made. In my view is that there are forces who will stop at nothing um, in fighting a progressive left agenda in the Federation. And I think those forces will do everything, including splitting the Federation, uh, because I think within the ANC SACP, there is a very strong view that Kosatu with Vavi, who's ready to take workers to the street, Kosatu with NUMSA, which continues to fight for an independent federation that takes mandate from workers, which is worker control and takes struggles on their behalf. But also a COSATU and NUMSA that calls for working class to organize itself as a class for itself. That's not the kind of COSATU that the ANC want. That's not the kind of the SACP leadership that it wants. Because the SACP leadership, since it went into parliament, it has become the defenders of the state in the true sense of the word. They are, their role, even when before they went to the state, it has been about to manage contradiction. Different to the kind of vanguard we have always known. The vanguard party, we know its role and mission, first is to continue to imbue the working class with political confidence is to be able to communicate one message to the working class that you are the locomotive force of history. Uh, you are the only class capable of carrying the revolution into logical conclusion. 
because you are numerical in numbers as the working class, you are the most exploited. But because as the South African Communist Party or uh, any party of any country, we got a duty to raise your levels of consciousness to that of a class that exploit you, you got capacity to be consistent to pursue the revolution. That's not our experience of the current South African Communist Party. Its role and mission today is to break the political confidence of the working class. It is using language to characterize in order to weaken and to liquidate any political confidence, for instance, that exists in NUMSA. Its mission is to isolate NUMSA purely for having political confidence with who taught us that the South African Communist Party and not the one of them, and they have taught us that the working class, the contradiction between labor and capital is a fundamental contradiction. That contradiction can only be resolved by a revolution. It is not a communist party whose role and mission in, the, in, the, in that struggle between the working class and capital is to manage contradiction for maintenance of the status quo. Because a communist party, we know, a vanguard party of the working class must be believing that we need to smash capitalism. We need the working class. We, the future is socialism, which is not a, an end in itself. We need a classless society. But I mean, we don't have that vanguard party. Today, as South African working class, as trade unions, we're vanguarding ourselves. All right, let's take a step away from alliance politics and let's talk about what NUMSA is doing on your own to try and address the very many challenges that are fa facing the working class and South Africa's poor in general. At your December Special National Congress, you talked about the launch of a united front, which would be an organization sort of in the image of the United Democratic Front of the anti-apartheid era. And then uh, you also talked about the establishment of a movement for socialism. So that, those are two separate things, the United Front and the movement for socialism. Can you clarify for us the, the, the difference between the two? And what's your vision for the United Front in, in particular? Well, I think the, the first thing that needs to be made is that the working class, the state of the working class in South Africa is very pathetic. The working class is vulnerable. The working class is exploited. The working class is leaderless. The working class is leading itself. I mean, we have seen service delivery protests um, to organizations who claim to be leading the working class within the Liberation Alliance. There is not a single one that basically take up those particular battles and champion them. And the working class, I mean, is, as I say, I mean, it's easy to throw statistic about 26 million people, but who carry the burden. It is the very same working class. The one person who's got a job, as I said, support five to six extended families. And it's tough for the working class. And they are being squeezed. And uh, you would see this sometimes when xenophobia erupts. The working class sometimes eat itself, um, where basically there will be a war um, on the basis of who are you, and, and they vent anger to each other. We think that unless the advanced detachment of the working class, and by saying so, we don't claim that NUMSA um, is got a monopoly of that advanced detachment of the working class. We honestly think that across various sectors of the economy, in this country there is an advanced detachment of the working class. And uh, there was one old man in KZN uh, by the name of Harry Gwala. He warned us long time ago that we must not make a mistake of thinking that when we are privileged to be in leadership, we lead the masses that have no political consciousness. The South African working class had used four pillars of struggle, mass mobilization, underground structures of our movement, um condo with Sizwe, isolation of South Africa on trade. It was sons and daughters of the working class of this country who were in the cutting edges of bringing down the apartheid system in this country. And uh, we very clear that in South Africa today, there's just no better cause like a cause of building organizations of the working class. 
And we think it is now the time for the working class to organize itself as a class for itself. For the past 20 years, we have done everything to try swell the ranks of the ANC. I mean, we have sent comrades in droves to parliament. And I think we've destroyed many, many comrades. Because once they are in the state, uh, they get swallowed. They are in a movement whose liberation, whose character today is basically is found wanting. There's no difference be a between DA and ANC policy today. And we have taken a view in December that the time has come first to do an honorable thing in the interest is to basically, if there is that advanced detachment of the working class, the immediate task is to defend the momentary interests of the working class. And we said we shall, NUMSA will remain NUMSA. It will remain a shield and a spear for workers. NUMSA has got a duty and a responsibility to defend its legal status, but it will not keep out of politics. And therefore, NUMSA will be a catalyst for realization of a united, united front. And by united front, we, we literally say to all organizations um, of civil society, civil society organization, NGOs, it's time to come together and challenge the social ills that are as a result of the neoliberal agenda that has become so dominant in our country. We're very democratic in that. We play the role of being a catalyst. We don't own monopoly of ideas. But we know very well that we defeated the apartheid regime in our township. We chased them away using the M plan of Madiba. So, I mean, the bottom line is that street and area committees, activists, are still there. Crime has escalated in this country. I mean, violence has escalated in the country. It's not like we have, we, we have got a shortage of campaigns to be taken, both to defend our people ag against the neoliberal agenda, against particular measures that must make sure that the working class is taken care of, which is basically vulnerable, as, uh, as I've already said, that basically it has been grinded by capitalism. And unless it stands on its own to challenge the dominance of this neoliberal agenda, no, no other class will do it for, 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 the, for the working class. And in our view, we think that the starting point is to fight for full implementation of the Freedom Charter. Because it's not, that's not an end, but just to realize full implementation, to champion manufacturing and industrialization is very key uh, for this country if you are to deal with the sea of poverty, unemployment, and inequalities. Of course, one of the resolutions that the Special Congress took said, look, are you going to wait till when? Are you going to wait for the Communist Party to wake up uh, one day? No. Our own experience now, both in the ANC and the SACP, there's no longer democratically run organizations. Organizations get manipulated. The people who are in power determine the outcome of conferences. A typical example where in Mangaung, we won, for instance, a, a, a resolution on nationalization of the commanding heights of the economy. But the leadership with scribes, they wrote a complete different resolution in the International Policy Conference. In Mangaung, unilaterally took a decision outside commissions to clean the resolution and take out nationalization. That is why we were very clear that the time has come for the working class. The working class need its own workers' party. And we call this a movement for socialism. But workers said, don't rush. The nature and form, go and study what has happened in Latin America. Look what has happened in, in, in Brazil, what's happening in Cuba. Bring back those particular experiences. We already had three, three modules um, of political schools in NUMSA, which are basically grappling with these questions, building political confidence, not just in NUMSA, but bringing civil society organization to begin to debate. We're going to have a, an international global symposium where we're bringing left formations into the country to have dialogue. And what will follow later will be a, a study tour in Latin America, where we are going to study those particular experiences. This year, we would have launched the United Front. And um, next year, 
the Central Committee of Humsa will receive the report. It will take a decision on the nature and form of the movement for socialism, which will be launched. People are speculating, though, that this movement for socialism is indeed going to lead to a workers' party which might contest the 2016 municipal elections. Look, we have not shied away from that at all. We think that the time for us where we become generous um, and just allow every Dom, Dick and Harry to claim to be representing our people with absolutely no consciousness is a problem. We have campaigned for particular critical municipalities in the past. We won, but what has happened? There's been no service delivery to our people. Their lives have not changed. We think that that's a serious, the United Front would have to consider whether it must not con uh, contest election. You know, local government is very easy. You don't need to have a political party. You can contest as an independent um, in a particular ward and contest that ward and continue to make sure that the working class that is being exploited. I mean, our people, basically, they can't electricity get cut every day. Water has been made. A commodity is very expensive. So we need councillors, for sure, in different communities that can really not see our people as clients. They must see our people as communities who must be given basic services. Let's have a discussion about the South African middle class and bringing on board more people in solidarity with the working class. You have a vision to improve the lives of the poorest South Africans. And you are advancing very progressive principles which hopefully will feed into policies for the future. But at the moment, the South African middle class, as opposed to being in solidarity with the working class, they do act as a bulwark between the working class and the elites. Um, and the bigger problem with that is that the middle class is a very vocal um, part or group in our very society. Articulate. And very articulate. In the contradiction between labor and capital, they will always be the middle class. They, I mean, they, they was, they, I would define them as a strata. They, they will always be stratas, uh, starting from the youth, the middle class, the intelligentsia, the academia, and so forth. They are not, how can I say, they are a, con they are a contested terrain. If the working class doesn't organize itself as a class for itself and become hegemonic and impose its hegemony in society, there's no middle class there's no youth that will vacillate towards the working class. I'm just saying they are a class. They, they will always be between the working class and the capitalist class. They would always be vacillating classes. I think it is upon the working class to basically contest the middle class, to create space. I mean, for sure, if we end up launching a movement for socialism, it would be for the first time that uh, we would be launching an organization which is constituted by the majority, which is the working class. All other organizations have been launched, by, by the way, by the middle class. They are minority organization, including the ANC. The fact that they, later on, the working class, at some point when things were tough, became dominant. Chris Hani explained this point very well. He says, as communists who were in the ANC, he, you know, he's very proud about the fact, in the 50 fighting years, he's very proud about the fact that they transform a, a, a very nationalist conservative movement into a movement on who centers stand the working class. I'm saying the, the Workers' Party, it will be for the first time to have um, a solid majority workers' movement being formed. But I, I also think that if we were to think that such a struggle can only be won purely because we want people who wear red clothes overall working class and, and that's it. I think we'll be making a fundamental mistake. I think that the, the academia, the intelligentsia, they have got a role to play. But, I mean, Lenin have written, what should be their role? How should they conduct themselves? For me, that will not replace the role of the advanced detachment of the working class to take care of the entire movement of the working class. Definitely, my view is that we would have to contest the middle class to win them over to our side. We need to win over young people on our side. Simply, like, we must know that if you take your children to school... But is it going to be an antagonistic contestation? I don't think so. I, I think that I think it should be a nuanced one. I think it should be a democratic one. 
I think that we, our starting point should not be to say to people, you will only come here if you, if you read. I think we must create a democratic organization where people are able to participate, uh, to make a contribution. They must be appreciated. But I think the working class must continue to shape the vision. We don't want to have another right-wing political party which is going to contest. There's no shortage of political parties in South Africa. We need a working class movement that is going to act in the interests of the working class and the poor and the majority of this country. And I think educated people, they've got a right to live the kind of life they want to live, but they must also be challenged to make a contribution in relation to ensure that we advance this thing called humanity. Irvin Jim, thank you very much for joining us at Saxis. Thank you very much. And thank you to our viewers and listeners for joining us at the South African Civil Society Information Service. And remember, if you want more social justice news and analysis, you can get that at saxis.org.za.